guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. And on this topic, I wanted to talk to you guys about narcissists being on the down low. Um, narcissists being on the down low. You know, I haven't talked about this topic in a while, but as times are changing and more people are coming out, more people are being open, more people are being open about their their abusers, even, you know, in the LGBT community. So I really wanted to contribute more to um, this subject because in, in my past videos, you know, I got more into the details of the things that you will hear from a narcissist or the signs to pay attention to, you know, when they're, you know, when it comes to their clothes, the nail polish and all of the things that they do to subliminally tell you that they're more feminine um, than masculine. You know, a lot of times when you're dealing with narcissists, when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you know, a man and a woman together, um, people don't want to get involved, right? Or people don't want to warn you sometimes even because or get too involved because they don't want to lose you. They don't want to lose your friendship, um, you know, because they know that when you're in these type of toxic relationships, you're going to side with your abuser because, you know, you don't really know who you're dealing with. And, you know, a lot of times people will try to tell you about these these abusers and and you kind of just brush it off. It's hard as a a empath to leave a narcissist and it's hard to expose the narcissist, especially to people that don't want to hear it or people that, you know, um just don't want to accept because they haven't seen that part of the narcissist the way you have. So you, when you leave, you realize that there's a lot of people stuck with these type of people and they're trying to find a way out. You know, um, you realize that there's a game that's being played. You know, there's a game that's be, that's been playing the whole time. You know, there's this, there's like another world out there that's filled with narcissists and they're all into different sorts of things. And, and you're thinking to yourself like, wow, I didn't know that there was this game being played where narcissists have multiple partners and then they circle around to their partners and they're using everyone. So you're waking up to that reality, right? But you don't even realize that there's like different dimensions of this stuff that's going on. So, you know, with me, I feel like I can touch down in, on almost every subject because God has allowed me to be in different situations where I can see the perspective of many different people. When the relationship with the narcissist ended and I reflected on a lot of things that were done or being said, and I think about friendships in the past, I realized, you know, me being able to, you know, have friends who are a part of the LGBT community, I was able to also see how a lot of times they're afraid of speaking up about their abusers and the narcissists that they're dealing with because these narcissists are, you know, acting like they're in the closet and they're silencing this person who, you know, is finally living their life. They're being free. They finally came out the closet. You know, they finally told their family and their friends that they're, you know, gay and now, you know, they finally found someone that they think they've fallen in love with and they're head, head over heels about and they're crossing boundaries for this person that this person's testing their limits. They're making them do all type of things. Um, you know, they're they're like the narcissist muse, you know, and, you know, next thing you know, the narcissist is gradually exposing themselves to this, you know, person in the LGBT community, they're exposing themselves slowly, 
you know, they're, they're letting them know, hey, you know, I'm married. Hey, I have kids. I have children. I can't come out because I have a daughter. I have a son. So they do these things and they target people in the LGBT community who, um, you know, might not have the best support system and things like that. So they're not only doing this to women, but they're targeting certain type of communities, even religions. You know, it's like narcissists targeting people at church, you know, um, narcissists target anyone who they feel is vulnerable. And, you know, me having, you know, gay friends growing up is what made me realize in my relationship in the future where I was able to put the pieces together to a lot of things where, you know, think the, you know, the proof was in the pudding to the point where, you know, my mind put everything like a puzzle. And I was like, oh, wow, this is why, you know, when you were surrounding yourself with these gay people that you were friends with, um, it seemed like they had another world going on. When I was younger, um, one of my first my first, I guess I would, I wouldn't say real friends, but one of my first closest friends, um, when I was younger was actually gay. And, you know, back then I didn't really know too much. I didn't really go into deep on that. I, all I knew was my friend likes boys and that's all it was. And I didn't look at him like he was an alien. I didn't question if, you know, if he was raped or if I didn't ask him any weird questions, you know, it was just my friend likes boys. And I think that what I really liked about him is that he was just out there, like he didn't care. Um, you know, he was free, like um, he was, you know, free. He was a free bird. And um, after a while, you know, as you know, the relationship progressed, um, I started to realize that he was, you know, being messy and he was basically, um, getting with other, other girls in the school. And he was basically, you know, starting arguments between the girls and, you know, starting chaos and things like that. So I started to see those narcissistic traits. Now that I look back, I, I think about that. And I started to realize, like, no, like, people have different personalities. So you dealt with a gay narcissist man, you know, and now you're dealing with someone who he's not really out there like that. He's out there like that. Everyone knows he's gay, but he's not super flamboyant. He doesn't, he's not seeking attention from anyone. He knows who he is. He has his own style, his own individuality. You know, um, he's not trying to be that, you know, that gay guy that's, you know, out there and being loud, right? Um, but there was something different about him. And the, the as the as the friendship progressed, um, he, you know, very classy, very conservative. Um, and eventually, you know, when we did get closer and closer, he confined in me to tell me about people at school and people that he was sleeping with or messing around with or experimenting with or, you know, being, you know, sexual with. And um, a lot of the people that he was talking about were straight people, people who were straight or had girlfriends and things like that. And I remember thinking to myself when, when he would tell me, I, I would think to myself and I would be like, I don't believe you. There's no way. No, no, he's not, you know, or, you know, you know, Jason. And I'm like, what, Jason? Like thinking like you can't you're not talking about Jason with the girlfriend. And it was like, yeah. And I couldn't picture that person, that guy. You're you're seeing someone with a with a woman, and you're seeing her, you know this guy with different different girls, you know different girlfriends, and you're thinking 
There's no possible way. And I think that even when my gay friend told me what he was doing, you know, the the relationships that he was having on the down low with these guys, I didn't want to believe it because it was like if I if I didn't see it with my own eyes, it was hard for me to believe it. So someone can tell you something and it's not that I didn't believe him because I did believe him, but because I had never actually seen it with my own eyes. There was a part of me that still was like, I can't really believe it because I can't picture it. I just can't picture it happening. But now, you know, that I'm old enough, I realize there was a whole nother world going on right in front of me that I wasn't even aware of. And a lot of times those flamboyant guys, they're flamboyant and and narcissistic sometimes because they know stuff that you don't know. So that's what I realized. That first friend, he knew things. He just wasn't willing to tell me. Then I have this other friend and he's willing to tell me the things that's really going on. And I'm thinking to myself, if you're quiet and you're timid, you know, you're a quiet guy and you're having all of these relationships with people that we know. Then my friend who was a narcissist, he most likely knew a lot of things that he just never told me. So that's when I realized there is like another world going on um, past, you know, what you see. Um, This is why the LGBT community, it's like, like they said, a community. There's stuff that you don't know about because you're straight. So, um, (laughs) you know, um, so what I realized with that was there's another world going on. So fast forward, um, you know, a couple years go by, um, college, you know, getting ready to go to college. And I ended up having another gay best friend. And it's crazy. That was my third gay best friend. It seemed like I was just going from gay best friend to gay best friend. I really don't know how it happened. It just so happened that way. And I think also... Those gay men felt like, okay, she's cool. You know, she knows. I think that they felt like I knew how to keep secrets. And that's why, you know, there was a close relationship there. But fast forward, my next best friend at the time, um, me and him, everyone kind of thought we were related because we were always together and he kind of looked like me. So I used to call him my brother. And um, eventually when he also got comfortable with me, he basically shared with me that um, this guy that was, you know, a famous football player in my town um, that I was friends with because I I actually used to be a dancer. So um during football games and things like that, um, you know, I would perform and, you know, I was friends with all of the football players and things like that and, you know, people in the band. And um, I remember my friend who was a football player, he was straight. He had a girlfriend and come to find out my gay friend was sleeping with him and having three sons with him. And a female friend, um, we weren't really friends, we're mo- mostly as- associates, but he- she was friends with my gay friend. So, you know, my gay friend ended up telling me he had a threesome with her and this football player guy. Um, what I realize now as well is that when my gay friend basically exposed to me about the threesome, What I realize now is that that football player friend that I had started to hang out with me a lot more. I believe that because he knew that me and this this friend of mine were really close to the point where we we said we were related. 
I think that he knew that this person must have told me what happened between them about the three about the threesome or whatever. So he did start hanging out with me more. And I just remember one time, you know, we were hanging out and we were in the car talking and the radio was playing. And, you know, I never told him that I knew about the threesome or anything like that. I never um, said anything to him. But some music was playing. We're hanging out, chilling out and, you know, having, you know, deep conversations. And next thing I know, like his attitude just changed. Like he started to act flamboyant. And I remember there was a song playing and, you know, I remember him saying he wanted to. Um, there was a, a male artist that we were listening to. And I remember he was telling me how fine he thought this artist was and, you know, telling me, you know, he'll bust it open for him. Like he started to say basically a lot of gay things. And um, I was kind of shocked because I never told him that I knew about the threesome. He just knew that most likely my best friend trusted me and told me. And he probably felt like if my best friend trusted me with that secret, he trusted me with that secret because he knew that I wouldn't go and tell other people that don't know what's going on, you know, because I, you know, I, I was good at keeping secrets. I'm still good at keeping secrets, but I believe that that's the reason he started to act flamboyant because he just felt like she has gay guy friends. She obviously is in our world where she knows that a lot of us are undercover, basically. And then he started to tell me about the threesome himself. And then um, he was trying to give me his backstory, like his reasoning to why he doesn't want people to know the truth. You know, so maybe he felt like, you know, I need to make sure that you're not going to tell anyone because I have a feeling that, you know, you know, just because that's that's your friend. So, um the guy basically that I was friends with, the football player, basically tells me that the reason he didn't want to come out the closet and was because he technically didn't consider himself gay. Um, he felt like he's never had sex with a man. He's only had, you know, blowjobs. So he's like, I'm technically not gay. I had a threesome with another woman. He, I didn't even have sex with him. You know, he just gave me a blowjob. So he's basically giving me detail, like basically telling me technically he doesn't feel like um, he's gay because he hasn't had sex with a man or, you know, so with that, let me realize you know, looking back now about narcissists who are on the down low is that they're getting blowjobs from other men. And there's some narcissists that might not have sex with men or let men have sex with them, but they're willing to have sex with other men. Um, they might not want, to, you know, anyone sticking anything in them, but they're willing to go and do that to other men and they're willing to have blowjobs and to them, they don't feel like they're gay, you know, because to them, it's like, if I was gay, I would be in an open relationship. I don't, the narcissist feels like if I don't claim you to other people, or if I had a partner before you, then technically you're the side chick, right? If I don't claim you, you're the side chick. So what happens to all of those men who are dealing with narcissists who are claiming to be closet gay, but when they finally use them up for everything they use them up with, they're telling them, you know, I'm not gay or you're obsessed with me or, you know, I, I never even claimed you to anyone. You know, I never claimed you. I never did anything with you. If I wanted to be gay and I wanted to you know, be gay. I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I mean, I don't have a problem with gay people, but I'm not gay. If I was gay, I would, I would mess with only men, you know, but I'm not gay.
that's just how they look at it. You know, um, they feel like, you know, um, I'm using men as a masturbation tool, but I, I wouldn't be in a relationship with a man. So that's what I realize about men who are on the down low is that, you know, they use other men only as masturbation tools. And not just that, but they have intimate relationships with them where they might not have sex, but instead of talking to you about their goals, you know that those intimate relationships, um, those intimate conversations that you just want to have with your partner, you'll start to notice that the intimate conversations they're having with another man. So it's like they're using you as the masturbation tool and their um, their emotions, if you call it that, whatever, their chemistry is actually being redirected towards a man. So you'll see that they'll wake up in the morning and they're calling or texting a man or they're checking on a man or they want to spend their time, all their time with a man or they feel like they can only be, they can only have conversations with that man and they can't talk to you. And you'll, you'll find yourself you know, telling those type of narcissist men, like, you know, why does it seem like you talk to John more than you talk to me? You know, why are you, why does it seem like, I feel like you, you'll you start feeling jealous of a whole man. So if you start feeling jealous of another man and something just doesn't seem right, sometimes something isn't right. Um, You know, so living in that world where I got to see how the LGBT community has like a whole nother world. When I started to see that, um, I, you know, it literally dawned on me later on in my relationship with this narcissist that he might be on the down low. So this is why I say every experience that you go through in life, it happens for a reason. You know, um, a lot of times, these type of guys that are on the down low, like the narcissist that I was with, you know, I never had actual proof that he was on the down low, but there was certain things that he was doing. Like he was going into chat rooms where it's, there's a lot that are known to have a lot of gay people, you know, and you know, they, they go from one minute they they don't like gay people and then like months years later they'll tell you oh I don't have a problem with gay people I'm just not gay you know I you know they'll tell you that they'll let other people be who they are and things like that you know because they don't want to bring any attention to themselves um but yeah he would go into chat rooms and then um he had a friend that um was kind of like abusive to his girlfriend, but he had one girlfriend that I would see him mainly with. And um, when his girlfriend broke up with him, um, they were going, you know, he was trying to get the narcissist to go out or he would try to spend time with the narcissist, um, just kind of like hanging out or having a drink. And um, I remember just being in the room with both of them and something told me something gave me like this weird vibe where I kind of felt like his friend liked him almost like it's not like oh that's my friend that's like my brother it's like you'll get a whole different type of feeling almost like did you guys do something or were you guys playing or like do you guys play around in a way where it's kind of sexual or are you guys kind of attracted to each other even though you guys claim you're friends are you kind of it just made me give gave me that vibe and sometimes you'll see that they'll call each other pretty boys and things like that and I don't oh I don't overlook any of those things because I always feel like um the narcissist they're sending messages to you and they think it's a joke. Another thing that I also realize is that a lot of narcissists that are on the down low, they're the type of guys that have threesomes with their other guy friends. So when you see guys having threesomes with a girl 
and they're acting like, oh, we found a girl that's a slut and, you know, we're not into men. We're just happy to find a girl that's a slut. A lot of times that's all a front. So, you know, a lot of times guys that guys that are on the down low, they're the type of guys that like, you know, go and hang around their friends and their friends are basically watching porn in front of them. Like any anyone who watches porn with other with the same sex, something's going on like in their mind, something disturbing. That's not normal for a guy to like put porn on and they're like, oh, it's a, it, there's girls here, but it's a gang of guys. So, you know, that doesn't mean anything just because there's females there. So think about like, you know, any any man that is putting porn in front of other men, especially even women. You know, I remember I had this crazy um, co-worker that used to say crazy things um, about her sex life. And she basically had told me that her husband and her would have like three sons with other guys. And I was like, red flag. And she's like, oh, no, we're not like that and this and that. I'm like, okay. So, you know, that's just a really a warning to people that when you're having those type of relationships and you think, you know, you have loyalty to someone, a lot of times if you're dealing with a narcissist, they don't have loyalty to you towards you. They're just making you cross boundaries with yourself because they have. So a lot of times, you know, narcissists that are on the down low, they'll, you know, they'll try, they'll try to have you do anal sex with them or, you know, you'll just, they'll just be playing with you back there, you know, because they think you like it. A lot of times that's what they like. A lot of times, you know, you'll see that the narcissist, like they, they want blowjobs all the time. And it sometimes it even seems like they don't really like you know, women's body parts, it almost seems like they really want to play back there with you. So, you know, narcissists that target women and men in the LGBT community are some of the most dangerous type of undercover closet um, monsters that you will come across um, just because they're living their whole life in this big illusion and they have this deep hate um, towards the men and they have this deep hate uh, towards the women because, you know, they, they have to manipulate um, that person in the LGBT community not to basically snitch on them. And then they hate women because they feel like women can use their bodies to get access to people easily. So that's what they hate because they want to be able to get access to, to supply. This is why a lot of times when certain narcissists do come out of the, you know, closet, they go full blown, I want to be a woman. And even with, you know, these type of people, these type of narcissists that are, you know, they don't care about men or women. They they care about supply that they're 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 willing to have surgery to look like women. This is why um certain people in the LGBT community don't like certain you know gay men who start to try to you know that that try to change their gender because a lot of times those men don't appreciate women and then they try to gaslight why they are the way they are and certain people don't like that a lot of times what you'll also see is like guys that are into like video games or they're into like anything that's online a lot of times you don't even realize that these dudes are like gay and they go online and play like video games with like guys that they don't know, like strangers. And then they start having like sexual conversations. And I've seen that actually happen where um, someone's playing a video game with another guy and they don't really know that guy and they got their headphones on and they think no one's hearing them. And then they start blurting crazy things out like, man, you can come and suck my, you know what, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, isn't he talking to a guy? Why is he telling him to suck his, you know what? So you'll see things like that with um, narcissists who are undercover. It's almost like they're getting happy, 
you know, to come home to play this video game and to talk to a friend. And they might even tell you about the friend like, oh, that's just my online friend. His name is so and so. And this is how they're able to have a down low relationship as well. So, yeah, I wanted to basically talk to you guys about my experiences because sometimes you don't want to believe it just because you're like, I don't have proof of this. But you have to think about it. A lot of times you don't even have proof of the narcissist, you know, cheating on you with the woman and you know they are. And then later on you do get the proof that you knew that all along, right? So it's the same thing with narcissists who are on the down low. A lot of times you might not have the proof, but the signs are there. Or they're even playing around with you, you know, even asking you like, you know, what would you do if I told you I'm not into women? You know, they'll ask you things like that. What would you do if this? What would you do if someone told you this? You know, they'll give you little hints, you know. So pay attention to narcissist men who are, you know, they're trying to impress other men. They're trying to you know, get praise from other men. They're seeking for compliments from other men. Everything is about men, 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 men. You know, every man wants to be my friend. Every man is staring at me. You know, the narcissist is wearing those sweatpants trying to show their print. And they're like, that guy is staring at my print. You know, um, a lot of narcissists that are on the down low, um, you know, they have this confidence about them where they feel like they're pimps because to them in their minds, it's like, you know, I got all these women. I have like four or five different women fighting for me. And it's not because and it's and it has more to do with status, you know, so that they can get male supply so they can they can attract other men. A lot of times they, they're not attracted to not, you know, they, they might find these women attractive, just like a I can have a gay friend that wants to be around me. But to them, a narcissist that's on the down low, they're getting off on supply. They're getting off on what they can get. They're getting off on the image. They're getting off on the jealousy that they're causing with their partners who are gay and open you know, and, and who know who they are. So, um, yeah, it's something to think about, you guys. Let me know your experiences. Share your thoughts if you guys have ever, you know, questioned certain things, certain behaviors about the narcissist that you've ever dealt with where you thought they were undercover. Or, you know, if you're in the LGBT community and you want to share with, you know, people in the straight community a part of your world and what really goes on, um, you know, feel free to share your thoughts on this. You know, how do you guys feel about, you know, um, people in the community? Do How do you feel about, you know, um, narcissist in the gay community how do you feel about people who are in the closet do you guys think that people who are in the closet are most likely narcissists or do or do they portray to be victims kind of like oh I want to come out I want to come out but my family my friends my my kids do they seem like they they want to come out or does it seem like um the more you get to know them, they're only pretending to act like they want to come out and they're they're trying to feed you this story because you once felt like that at one point. So you're sitting there trying to be their support system because you went through it and you're thinking they're like you, but they're really not like you. They're they're demonic, you know. So um, if you guys enjoyed this video, do not forget to hit the like button. Do not forget to like you guys, do not forget to comment, um, subscribe, share this video. If you guys care, share this video to your friends, to people, um, to expose these type of narcissists, um, that are literally contaminating, you know, the lives of others. And if you guys are looking for coaching sessions and, you know, you want to talk to someone that can understand you and understand, um, 
not just, you know, this topic that I'm talking about, but you're dealing with a narcissist in your life, um, I will be putting my information on this video where you can text me and ask um, how you can book an appointment with me. And um, I'm sending you guys lots of love and lots of light and peace your way. And I will talk to you guys on the next one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.